Hello, hi, I'm Kuchinegi, good to have you, and this is Rainswep. Now, Rainswep is a 2D adventure game in which you play a detective and you have to deal with, well, all of his stuff, and also a seeming murder-suicide that happened in the quiet city of Pineview, but uh, we'll, we'll talk more about it. Let's just uh, go right in and play the demo version of Rainswept, which is available for Windows on Ish.io. Just check the links in the description below. So this is Monday, 12.14 a.m. on October 7th, 1996. And this is where it all starts. Well, this part starts. Right. Well, since there was a murder, we've been called. Frostwood Interactive. These are the developers. Of course he smokes. I mean, that's a bit more 80s, 70s stuff, but yeah, yeah. He smokes. Detective Anderson, the main character, who you're going to control. Uh, control using, you know, the mouse and keyboard uh, or um, or a controller. I'm playing with the controller because, you know, it feels really well. And uh, the full game is set to come out sometime around mid-2018 and uh, you can check its Steam page if you want to wishlist it. Just, uh, you know, links in the description. Rain swept. Yes, it rains a lot apparently in this game, that's, that's the thing. Monday, 7.35 a.m. October 7th. So this is the next day. Right? Yeah, the next day. And we just arrived at the crime scene. Alright, I'm here. Time to see what all this is about. Okay, so you can play uh, controller, keyboard. You can run. Kind of funny, but uh, you can run. That's my car. Alright. They've been here a while, it looks like. Well, can I use the car? Now, why would I do that? Why not? Steal a car. You're a cop anyway. Terrible. What? I said terrible. Terrible business, all this. Uh, this was only a matter of time. Everyone knows that. I know, still. They were so young. Young and stupid, you mean? The stories I've heard. I guess you're right, it was just a matter of time. What? It was a matter of time. It's really coming down today, we should get back home. A few more minutes, I want to see what happens. Nothing's gonna happen, I'm gonna catch a call, that's all. Hmm. Just people talking. Okay. That's the way inside. I wonder why Chief sent me all the way to Pineview for this case. Only one way to find out. Well, I'm not going, going there just yet. This crowd is too close to the crime scene. The number of cops are too few. This is poor. Hmm, an open window. Now, what's he up to? Oh, putting up the sign. Ma'am, please, you need to step back, uh, to back away a little. What happened here? A murder? Johnny, get under the umbrella. Granny, I want to leave. Can I go back to the shop? Could see this coming a mile away. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. Alright, Johnny, let's go. There's no point standing here now. I knew this would happen. We should have done something. There's nothing we could have done. Chris is responsible, I'm so sure. It's hard to disagree, but let's not speculate. So these are some of the town's folk. Detective Anderson, right? The chief is inside. They've been waiting for you. Hmm. Yes. You need to push the crowd further the, the, from the scene, officer. What? You have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. 
The crowd handled them. There could be evidence out here. Oh, yes, I'm trying. Hey, hey, Williams, what the hell are you doing? Trying to prop up this tape, sir. It won't stay. Well, get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir. Richard? Don't call fool Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Could this. Sorry, detective. Thing is, we're short of band power here. We weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. The murder, I mean. And to top it all off, this rain out of nowhere. You know what's weird? That the cop has a police, uh, has a cap with, that says police on it. But it says police, like back to like it's like it's mirrored so that's a bug that's a you know i guess the model is inversed so yeah that's kind of weird though it's you know uh top of the rain out of nowhere yes just get the crowd under control i'm heading inside yes detective don't worry richard uh, i mean williams okay get the people back i'm going in should i go in yeah obviously obviously go in no point hanging around here, especially since it's raining, yeah. Okay, God. Well, we definitely have some bodies. That's the sheriff. I should talk to him f first. Alright, let's go. Or kind of run in here, okay. Michael? Huh? What the? Oh... Detective, are you okay? Uh, I think so, yeah. Guess I'm just a little tired after the long drive here. Uh, Detective Anderson, right? The head office called in to say that you'd be joining us here for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris and this is Lieutenant Walt. What? 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 We appreciate the department sending help, but uh, I don't think we'll need it. This case is ready to be wrapped up. What do we have here? The victim here are the victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head. Looks self-inflicted. And Diane Miller, age 24, single bullet wound to the chest. The victims lived together, were unmarried. Hmm. Hmm. Any signs of an intruder? No signs of force entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. An officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There are no footprints outside that window. Hmm, except the officers. Oh, yeah, I should probably not play coy. No signs of struggle or marks on the body either. Hmm. So, what was the time of death? According to the next door neighbor, a single gunshot was heard around 12 15. Uh, 015 hours. Oh. 0, 0, 15 hours? Okay. 15 past 12 a.m. It's kind of weird though that's just one gunshot heard. Because there are at least two shots here, so... We see the call at about uh, 20 minutes past 12, and we're here in another 5 minutes. We found them dead upon arrival and confirmed the timing. Hmm. What do we know about the weapon? Both shots were fired from an M1911A1 45 caliber pistol. The ballistics report will tell us more. Hmm. Any witnesses? Just the next door neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Shortly. Honestly speaking, detective, we think it's pretty obvious what's taking place here. What do you mean? They had your reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows it. Diane was shot at point blank range with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. He then went ahead and shot himself as the wound is clearly self-inflicted. So you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. Unnecessarily. Well, let's remain silent. It's obvious a case of murder-suicide detective. Right. Remain silent. <laughs> um, are you suggesting there was domestic violence involved? It would seem so. It was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, rumors. You can call it that, but uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. 
I'm not sure that... And they were never really able to fit in this town. They were new here, moved in about six months ago. Never got out much, didn't make any friends. We don't need to analyze the obvious, detective. That should be inefficient. That would be inefficient. Officer Blunt will assist you through the course of your work here. Hello, detective. And uh, one more thing. We're looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want to drag it uh, if it can be helped. We have an important festival coming around in a week's time. So you might say this is a rather bad timing. So there's no need to go around complicating things, alright? Just get me a story that works and we can close this case quickly. Yeah, that's not exactly how police work, uh, you know, happens. It's just like, like, yeah, just find have to find the facts, not... Okay. Good. I shall see you later. Goodbye. Okay, then. Um, anyway, have a look around the room. If you like, come talk to me when you're done. Okay. No. Okay, so this is Detective... Hey, Detective! Need any help? What's the plan? Have a look around the room. Once you're done, talk to Lieutenant Watts. Okay. Huh, what's this? Hmm. Uh, Chris, 96. I'm guessing Chris built some of the furniture around the house. Hmm. Okay. Gunshot to the stomach. The damage and the residue would suggest the shot was taken at point blank range. That rules out the possibility of her being shot from the open window. She would have been in a line of sight from the outside though. Huh, is that blood outside? There's no mistaking it, the perpetrator would have to be inside the house to cause this kind of wound. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. Uh, let's see, what else we have here? Okay, the pistol, as the lieutenant said, it looks pretty old. There are four rounds in the magazine, this gun can hold seven. Huh, so maybe there were three fi shots fired. Three rounds have been fired from this gun at some point in time. Two were fired last night, or was it three? Or was the gun loaded with only 6 out of possible 7 rounds? Hmm. The gun belonged to Chris according to Lieutenant Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. If there, uh, if there was anyone else that could have known... Is there anyone else that could have known where they kept the gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. I know who's answering, that's the weird thing. Remember, no sense of forced entry. Could it be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? No one I can think of. Hmm. hmm. 45 ACP rounds. It's a box of 20 rounds. There are 73 in here. Three are missing. Two were used during the murder. What about a third? Hmm. Hmm. Bullet wound to the head. The skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. His body position uh, and the way he fell would indicate that he was sitting sideways on the chair facing where Diane's body is now. The angle of shot indicates that he was shot from this side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the refrigerator. No clues there though. He could have been shot from that window. At the moment it's shut. Hmm must get it checked for fingerprints of footsteps outside. I mean, it kind of looks like there's some blood there, right? Could someone have entered and left through here? We should have the fingerprints results in a couple of days, detective. Don't forget, there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris's, uh, Chris would have sat uh, facing the refrigerator. That would make sense, that way the killer would, wouldn't need to enter the house. But in that case, who shot Diane? Hmm, let's examine hand. Huh, gunpowder residue on his hand, on his right hand. Hard to disagree with the lieutenant here, this is strong evidence of the victim shooting himself. 
Unless it was made to look like that. What's this? Red wine. Looks like a new bottle was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. It would seem that Chris was sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane? Whether he was waiting for her or someone else, we don't know yet. A glass of wine was knocked over. Mm, this looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in here as well. How did blood spatter in this? Uh, how did blood blood spatter in this direction? It doesn't make sense. Officer Blunt, I think there's been more than two gunshots that we're seeing here. Hmm. Oh, the chair. The chair's fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. And here? This chair has not been moved. Looks like Chris was sitting alone from the, when the murder happened. Alright, I think we got everything here. Everything's popping up as you can see. Alright. Let's, uh, let's move forward. Shall we proceed? Yes. I'm done. Alright, let's have a chat with Mr. Willis outside. Ah, the rain has finally let up. And he can smoke, apparently, because that's, that's how he, what he wants. Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right uh, there, next door. Coffee detected? Um, yes, please. Thank you. You can ask him any questions you may have about last night. Hmm, right, Mr. Willis. Can you tell me everything that you saw or heard during last night's events? Well, see, I headed off to bed at around 11 p.m. as I usually do after a glass of whiskey. Helps me sleep, you know? Anyway, somewhere around 12.15 a.m. I'd say I was woken up by a loud bang. I ran to the bedroom window that looks straight down at their place. And? What did you see? Nothing. The kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went to the phone and called the Lieutenant Watts here straight away. Hmm. Alright, let's see. How long did it take you to get to the window once you heard the shot? Uh, about a couple of seconds, Detective. No more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell out of my bed when I heard the shot, so you might as well say that I was halfway there already. Hmm, did you see any sort of activity on the street? Anything unusual? No, Detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. Hmm. You said you heard a single shot? Yeah, the whiskey usually knocks me out pretty damn good, so if it's been more, I didn't hear him. Alright, let's see other questions. Okay, do you live alone, Mr. Willis? Yeah, I do. Nearly got married, it's a... a long story. Uh, one meant to be talked over a couple of whiskeys, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? I... No, I was just at home, you see. Am I, am I a suspect? It's procedure, Mr. Will. I know, Mr. Willis. He's cool. React on... Um, oh, let's react to the unprofessionalism on display, yes. <laughs> oh, my lord. What? Hmm. Did Chris and Diane have many visitors? Friends, etc.? No. No, not at all, in fact. It's all this time, in all this time, I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car, and Father Smith came over a couple of times when they uh, when they newly moved in a year back almost. Yeah, people rarely ever visit them because they mostly kept to themselves. See, never made any friends here. Hmm. But sometimes folks don't like those kinds either. So I can't really say. I mean, you know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. No, please elaborate. Exactly. Yeah. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really liked them. Nobody really knew them. They never got out much. Hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? As we drink coffee? I uh, don't know if this is useful, but... You might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple of times, usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early, so maybe that's why I never heard all this before. 
was a couple of times I was up a little later. One night, about a month ago, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud sounds, like stuff being flung around and such, see? I heard someone crying. I was thinking to myself that maybe I should call the police, but then it quieted down all of a sudden. We never received any calls for domestic violence, but people have often talked of stories of this kind. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? Well, I was up late writing an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere around 1st to 3rd last month? 1st, 3rd September, alright. Anything else? No, that's all about it. That's all I know about this, okay. Right, thanks for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. No problem, and uh, thanks for the coffee. Yeah, you drunkard. You freaking drunkard. Okay, where are we going next? Well, I think that's cleared up a lot of things. Really? <laughs> it has? Oh, come on, detective. You're supposed to be good at these things, aren't you? Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots, and there are no signs of anyone forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? Hmm... The amount of information we have as of now is very little, it's not the complete picture. We need to dig deeper if we want to know the truth, and not just confirm our assumptions. Well, what, what about the door, huh? How was it locked from the inside? Explain that. I checked the door, it locks itself from the inside when you pull it close. Regardless of whether you pull it from the outside or push it from the inside. Hmm. I'm not saying that's what happened, I'm saying that there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you'd like, detective. You won't find anything new here. I was probably capable of handling this case myself, but of course the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap this case before the festival, so don't expect him to wait for one more for more than a week. So maybe that's the length of uh, rain swept, you know, the whole the week. I don't know. I have to head over to the station now. Officer, escort Detective Anderson to his hotel. Will do, sir. All right. So we're going to the hotel now. Okay. Uh. We'll come back in the evening to search uh, the house. Letters, diaries, things of that sort. Alright. When can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner, but I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another close look around the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets? Hmm. Alright. We're actually glad that you're here, you know, although the Sheriff and Lieutenant Watts would rather not admit it. Even to themselves. This is like, the first murder here in the last hundred years or so, we have no idea how to deal with it. Um, I mean... It's alright, I know what you mean. I guess that's that kind of rises up as a, as a theme, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know what you mean. I just joined the force a month back, for instance, and the murder already, I'm not sure if I'm ready. I kinda knew them, you could say, I've never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's kinda weird and a bit sad. I know, when I, I know as an officer I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. You'll be fine, give it time. Thanks, detective, that means a lot. Hmm. What do you know about Chris and Diane? Well, not much. It's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody really knew them. They came in here, kept to themselves, and never bothered making friends. Everyone thought they were some kind of weirdos. I admit, I kinda agreed with that sentiment too. I feel bad about that now. There's, it's no reason to make assumptions about people's character, and character can't be used as evidence. Well, I... Mm. Well, it could be, I guess. Why not? Hmm. So I'd really like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. The sheriff said that there's a festival in town next week? Uh, what's that about? Oh, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair in the Market Street, there's food, rides. We get a lot of tourists from nearby uh, states 
uh, around that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. That, of course, is less important in light of recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on, ass on, assumption what on, our, on our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these people's lives that ended. Were th these were people's lives that ended. And it's our job to figure out what really happened. So, I guess what I'm saying is, you can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. Alright. Let's keep on driving. I'm hoping the local police will let me do my job I've been sent to do, though. I don't mean you. Detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an asshole. <laughs> I'm serious, he doesn't care about anything except running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy the festival week. I hate people like that. But then what's though, he's really sweet. Uh, I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but... Oh my god. What the hell? Uh, was that the person that appeared in front of us? Jack's auto repair shop. Oh. I saw her. She was right there. Why am I seeing her? Why am I thinking of her? Ah, so this is past. What's this? Hmm, tar, shovel, wonder what Jack uses them for. Jeez, I hope she's not hurt. How's the car looking? Um, I don't know. Ask Jack, he's working on it. Talk to me when you're done. Alright. Huh, poor car. My poor car, exactly. This is Jack's auto repair shop. Jack's the name of the guy fixing my car. And, and... The uh, Willis mentioned that Jack came to see to repair uh, Chris and Diane's car, so interesting. Let me see what else he's here. Jack's got us here in that. Okay. Oh, nice car, Jack. Oh, what a beauty. I wonder if it's Jack's. Probably. Okay, can't go there. Hmm, can he afford? To have like two cars. Hmm. He said his name's Jack. It's a good thing he was passing by when, when the crash happened. You look kind of uncomfortable. Don't you need the car to be on a ramp or something? Nah, man, you worry too much. Hmm. What's the issue with the car? Well, the headlights and the bumpers gone. You need to have them replaced. I'm going to have to check if I've got a replacement part so I can fix it. How long will it take you to fix it? A couple of days, maybe three, depending on how quick I can get the parts. Shouldn't take more than four days at most. Oh boy. So four days in pine view. Hey dude, can you fetch me that big red wrench? Uh, it should be in the toolbox outside. Oh. You're amazing, but thanks. Okay. Okay, let's see what's in here. Big red or big blue? He said red, so... Let's not screw around with him, let's give him the wrench. Yeah, that's it. Ah, I love this wrench. Thanks, bud. Hmm. That red convertible there, is that yours? Yeah, man, that's a 65 Mustang. I love that ride. I got it used for pretty cheap of a guy who couldn't take care of her, of her anymore. Luckily, the car's got something that keeps it running like new now. A new engine? Nah, dude, it's got me. I spend all my free time on her fixing her up and making sure she runs better than new. And I keep her happy by taking her on long, beautiful drives on the roads outside town. <laughs> uh, what do you use that tower and shovel for? Uh, that, dude, uh, I do a little bit of construction work on the side sometimes, you can, you know, fixing up drivers, driveways and stuff for extra cash. Okay. Detective, you're here investigating Diane's murder, right? And Chris, yes. Do you have any information that could help us? I don't know about information, man, I just know that he did it. Ooh, maybe a love triangle here? 
What do you mean? Chris, he killed her. Huh. Why do you say this? I... Well, everyone could see it coming. Diane... They say she was troubled, scared of him even. Some someone in this town should have done something. We all knew this could happen. But no one cared enough about them to bother interfering. Hmm, how do you know all this? Uh, I don't know, rumors around town mostly. <laughs> Did you know Chris and Diane well? No, not really. Anyone here barely knew them. They were not the kind to come out and make friends with their neighbors, looks like. They still felt like outsiders to the rest of us. Huh. What were you doing last night? I... What I was doing last night? What was I doing? Yeah, yeah, that's what I asked. Oh, yeah, right, I, I drove a couple of miles from here and drank a few beers while I enjoyed the view. All night? Yeah, the stars, man, you see? Was there anyone with you? Did you meet anyone? Nah, man, there's nothing like the pressure of your own company sometimes. Oh, so he was masturbating in the, like, okay, outside, got it. Alright, thanks for your help, Jack. We shall be uh, back if we have any more questions. Of course you will. What do you mean, Jack? Quit your car, man. Come back when it's fixed. You get way too serious, way too fast, man. Chill out. Chillax. Chillax. Well, I just saw a ghost, so I can't really chillax. Oh, I can't push. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Hey. Hi. Are you, you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine, surprisingly. I'm really sorry about the crash. I don't know what... It's alright, especially since we're okay. Something else worries me, though. What's that? What happened back there? How do we hit that tree? Hmm. Let's be honest with her. I mean, I thought I saw something. What did you see? I thought I saw a person. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. But you are okay otherwise. I mean, I don't know you, so I don't know if this is a regular thing. No offense. No, that's okay. I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you collapsed back there at the crime scene too, and then this? Yeah, I don't know, I've been a little dizzy all day. Maybe I just need a nap. Seeing this kind of stuff kind of bums me out. Hmm. I'm just saying, if there's anything wrong, you can tell me about it. Don't hesitate. I won't. Detective? Yeah? Yes, Jack. I'm gonna drive to the next town for some spare parts. Want me to drop you to the hotel or something? Hmm, i like to take a walk around town first, actually. I called up the station for from Jax's phone. A car is on the way. They'll drop us off to the Market Street and your luggage at the hotel. You take care now, dude, until we meet again. Okay, so we're going to the Market now, Market Street. Ask around. What do the town folks say? Here we are, the famous Pine View Market. I'm kidding, not much to see here, really. Let's see if we can talk to some of the locals here. Alright, it isn't very busy at this time of the day, but there should be a few people out here. Just let me know when you're ready to get back to the hotel. We can come back and talk to them another day. Well, I want to talk to them now. You don't tell me what to do. Let's see. Fiction or non-fiction? Uh, fiction. Me too! Hashtag me too. Hmm, 4 p.m. Ooh, nice. I like that. Uh, okay. That's open, but I can't go there, apparently. What's this? Hmm, cherry pie. You should come here for breakfast uh, someday. The hmm. owner, Mark, is a pretty great guy. You mean me? The fresh shop? The fresh. No, fresh coffee? What the hell does that say? Pine fresh coffee? Uh, I think it says pine fresh coffee, yeah. That's kind of weird. Can I talk to the guy? Oh, yeah, I can. That must be Mark. I sure am. Alright. 
Hey, detective, have a seat. Do you want some tea? Coffee? My cafe is extremely cozy and warm. Hmm, no, that's alright, I... Come over here if you want a pint. Keep your unhealthy habits to yourself, Alan. Too much coffee is unhealthy too. Also, if you haven't noticed, he's already smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Ignore him, he just likes to annoy me. And yet I let you get to me. I let you get to me. Who's that? Uh, that's Alan, owner of the bar next door, and my brother. Twin brother. Uh, not that you know by the way we lead our lives, I don't know how we ended up as polar opposites. I know, I got all the good stuff. Shoo, go away. Hmm. Let's see, have you lived here in Pineview? That, that, the question apparently, like, that skipped. It's, it's a bug, but it's fine, you know, it happens to them. Uh, so I was born here, my family lived here for many years before that. We left for the city when I was about 10, my dad was looking for better work. I returned as soon as I graduated, about 9 years back, I preferred a life there, life here. Big cities just, just aren't for me. Now it's just me, my books, and my coffee shop. Life is simple and I love it. Hmm. Did Alan also come with you at the same time? No, Alan, he only joined me here uh, 5 years back. We had, he had a bit of trouble in his old life and what a fresh start. Oh, so he was wanted by the mob. Maybe he can tell you more about that. Hmm. Do you live by yourself, Mark? No, I'm married. Have been for about six years now. Met my wife in my own cafe, actually. Oh, it's a cute story. We're very happy for you, Mark. She's really unprofessional. Does Alan also live with you? No, but he lives close by. Was he in last night? Yes, I think so. I don't I didn't check or meet him though. Hmm. Let's see. Can you tell me where you were last night? Are you the murderer? Sure, as always I close my place by 8 pm. I bought some supplies from the general store down the street and then went home. I assume the storekeeper will remember that? Yes, Mrs. Brown was in last night uh, at that time. She should be able to confirm what I just said. And Alan? Could he confirm this? He didn't come to work yesterday, took a day off. Mm, really? Really now? Said he was feeling unwell, so he stayed at home all day. Uh, looks like that's past, luckily. He looks fine today. Anyway, I went back home after that, uh, that, after that change and went for a jog as usual. Hmm. Came back, took a nice long warm bath, made myself a cup of coffee, and had my dinner. Wait, he had coffee before dinner? That's not, that can't be that good that night, right? Then read a book for an hour or so and was probably asleep by 10.30pm. Huh. A pleasant, ordinary evening. Hmm. Who puts it like that? It's like, a pleasant, I just had a pleasant, ordinary evening. This guy's hiding something. Nobody talks like that. Hmm, let's see. Alright, Mark, we'll talk later. See you around, detective. I think he's hiding something. Let's talk to his brother. What's up, detective? Oh, we can smoke. We can be smoke buddies. Hi, Alan. Officer Blunt. Hmm. Can you tell me about yourself, Alan? How long you've been here, that sort of thing. Sure. Uh, if you've been talking to my brother Mark already, you probably know I moved here five years ago. My wife left me and I want to get away from it all. Though I'd, uh, I'd come in here again. Though I'd come in here again as all this is and give this place another shot. I thought I'd go. I'm coming here again, sorry. Fought. I fought. Okay. Turns out it's just as bloody boring as it was when I was a 10. <laughs> but hey, it, uh, it got me out of place. Uh, I began to hate even more, so it's an improvement, you know? And you get used to the peace eventually, to the pace eventually. Mark did a big favor giving me half of his cafe to start the business in. Wow, that's a big favor. Guess he's not too pleased with the business I chose to run though. <laughs> he's a good guy. Huh. Alan, where were you, say... Uh, where would you say you were last night? 
As I'm sure Mark uh, told you already, I was at home. I wasn't feeling well, so I stayed home instead. Is there anyone that can confirm this? Apart from Mark, I don't know, since I didn't leave home, no one saw me, you know? Hmm, okay, so no concrete alibi? Chris and Diane, did you know them well? Nope, not at all. I'm the kind of person who minds his own business, I don't go interfering with people's affairs and their lives. What do you mean? I just don't go wasting my time getting to know people if there's no need for it. To me, it looked like they preferred to mind their own business well. So no, I didn't know them at all. Hmm, okay. Okay, Mr. Allen, we'll talk later if the need arises. Okay. <laughs> Bread and biscuits. Grandpa's bakery. That's one way to name a bakery. He may be kind of creepy at times, but he sure knows how to bake well. I may be old, Tony, but I'm not completely dead, you know. Sorry, Grandpa. I'm not your grandpa. <laughs> Hello, uh, uh, Grandpa? I'm not your grandpa. And your name is? Grandpa. Hmm. Mr. Grandpa, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. And I was wondering if I could ask Mrs. Brown there out on a date. But wondering isn't doing, is it? Huh? Just look at her. Oh boy, makes me feel 40, young, 40 years younger, she does. Hmm. Do you ever plan to grow up, Grandpa? Any more growing up and I might just die. <laughs> That's actually, yeah. And I'm playing, uh, pl planning on doing that before I ask you out. Goodness, unbelievable behavior, such immaturity at this age. She likes me, I know she does. You're deluded. Woohoo! Anyway, you had questions, young man? I thought I did. How long have you lived in Pineview? Forever. My family's been here for generations. Yes, I'm the last in line now. My shop's been here for generations too, you know, and I think I've taken real good care of it. Oh, and she's taking a real good care of me too. Hmm, where were you last night around 12 a.m.? Where do you think I was? Uh, in the hospital? Were you in the hospital? Are you making fun of me because I'm old? You will be in the hospital when I'm done with you. I was at home, sleeping. Can anyone confirm this? No, I live alone. Hmm. Have you noticed anything unusual, anything out of the ordinary in recent days? Hmm, now that I think about it, I actually might have. Yes? Mrs. Brown's been tying her hair in a much tighter bun lately. I wonder what that means. Is she something up and trying to hide that fact? Aw, Grandpa, you noticed these things. I mean, I mean it when I say it, beautiful. I'm a passionate lover. Very passionate. Ruined it. Um, hello, I was talking about the possible murders. Did you notice anything unusual leading up to that? Oh, no, much to say. Can't say I did. Hmm. Do you live by yourself? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Kids left Pineview for the big city. Too boring here, they say. It's been many years since the wife died. So I run the shop here by myself and I live down the street, pretty close by. But that's alright, I've got friends here to keep me company. Officer Blunt pays me a visit every day, for instance. It's always a pleasure to meet you, Grandpa. Also, there's Mrs. Brown. She makes every day exciting. Please, God, give me strength. Oh, look how she flirts. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Now, what can you tell me about Chris and Diane? When they first moved in, Chris would often come in in the evening and buy some things for me. From me. He'd come in daily almost, looked pretty cheerful too. Then a couple of months after that, uh, he kept, uh, he just stopped coming. The last few times he came, I could see that something wasn't right. Maybe trouble with the missus, I don't know. He and Diane went to the church maybe a handful of times. Once or twice they came over uh, hereafter for coffee and donuts. There were quite a couple, I tell you. 
He was the quiet and nonchalant one, she an exciting electrifying energy. A classic case of opposites attract to each other. If uh, what people say is true, I don't know how things went so wrong so fast. But then with these things you can never say. This was all about 4-5 months back. After that I hardly ever saw them out here again. Hmm. Alright. Thank you grandpa. We'll talk later. Who are you calling grandpa eh? I'm not your grandpa. Whatever crazy old man. What's it? Oh. These donuts sure do look good. What do you mean they look good? They're the best in Pine View. The damn donuts made with grandpa's love and warmth. Oh, he's definitely coming on those. <laughs> he's definitely on those donuts, yes. Wanna buy some? Uh, maybe later. Thanks, Gramps. I'm not your grandpa! Whatever, crazy old man. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Okay. Hello, man. Hmm? Who's this? Ah, you're that detective, aren't you? Come to ask about the murders? Something troubles you, boy. What is it? Uh, what do you mean? I know troubles all when I see one, detective. But I understand you don't have the time for such questions. That is good. Neither do I. Now, what is it? Hmm. How long have you lived in Pineview, Mrs. Brown? I was born here. I barely stepped outside Pineview all my life. I started the shop when I was about 25, had to support myself when I once I lost my husband. Hmm, so do you live alone or do you have your family here with you? John is the only family I got, he's my grandson, lost my husband in the war, I, I was about 25. You must have seen Johnny, right? Always oh, running around taking photos with his camera. Ooh, taking photos, maybe he has uh, some photos of the good couple that um, is no longer with us. His parents left him in a tough situation by making some stupid decisions in their lives, so I take care of him now. He's a good boy, he spends a lot of time helping his grandma around the shop. I'm getting older now too. Willpower and mental strength can only get you so far, you know, time catches up with you eventually. Not that I lack any mental strength, I've single-handedly taken care of a lot here. You really have, Mrs. Brown, I really look up to you. You're doing well, young lady. You're going... you're doing quite well for yourself. Hmm... Where were you last night, Mrs. Brown? I went to bed around 9 p.m. Johnny could probably confirm that. He was home too. Hmm... What can you tell me about Chris and Diane, Mrs. Brown? Ah, those two. Dumb from the start. Hmm, well, why do you say that? I told you, I know trouble so when I see one. And those two? I've seen it so many times over the years. One can always tell. Others will tell you that they were very much in love, but something wasn't right. I always felt that. And then when things really did uh, start uh, going wrong, everyone heard about it. Okay. Alright, we'll talk later, Mrs. Brown. Okay, detective, take care now. You too, Mrs. Brown. Okay, let's go. Hmm. I like how they run, it's kind of funny. Wow. Really nice view. Ah, the church. Maybe we can talk to the priest? Oh yeah, yeah. Because Chris and Diane did see the priest, so... Father Smith? Ah, hello, Detective. Anderson. Detective Anderson. New to the town, I assume? Well... Yeah, I'm just visiting. Yeah, I only just arrived. I wanted... That is good. That is good. And what do you think of Pineview? Do you like it here? Um... <laughs> it's peaceful, I'll, I'll admit that. It is, isn't it? You must enjoy your time here. The change of pace must be good coming from the city. But then you must uh, want to preserve this peace too, yes? Leave here without taking anything away from us. There is a way of life here, and I do my best to maintain that, for the good of my people. The ones that are here and are more than just a merry... Uh, here on... The ones that are here are more than just a merry whim. Hmm, I see. Anyway, detective, you had questions? 
Yes. I heard Chris was trying to start a hotel project here. Really? Well, did, that, that, did that actually come up? Hmm. As you're part of the Pinesview planning committee, can you tell me what was that about exactly? Sure, Chris wanted to open a hotel here with about 20 rooms or so. He said he wanted to keep it small in accordance with by our bylaws, but even 20 was almost pushing it. These things always grow out of hand. Once the tourists started coming in, uh, they'd see how untouched the place Pineview really is. The man would increase and of course Chris wouldn't want to pass out the opportunity to cash in on that. Regardless, he never got to that point. Chris always kept messing up his papers whenever he came in for approval. He didn't misplace them or mess up some of the details. I guess the delays cost him money too. It was all going downhill fast and well, then this happened. Hmm. What can you tell me about Chris and Diane? Did you know them well? Not too well. They came to church a couple of times after they moved into Pineview but then soon stopped coming at all. They withdrew themselves from the rest of the community and I can't say that helped them. Friends can help in difficult times and it's obvious they were beginning to have really difficult times by the end. If they'd continued to come to church, I could have offered some guidance. Sometimes the relationship can entangle you. But unfortunately, it had come to this. Whatever their troubles, it looks like they made each other suffer for it. I'm sure you learned that uh, what most of us here already know. In any case, I wish you luck with your investigation. Hmm. Can you tell me where you were last night, Father Smith? I was all here all night. I finished up some work and I went to bed by 10 p.m. I'd say. All right. We'll talk later, Father Smith. We sure will. All right. So I guess we talk to everyone. Oh, we're back at the hotel. Yay! Hotel rooms. They all feel the same, don't they? Reminds me of better times. Creepy. <laughs> that is actually kind of creepy. That should turn the lights off. Okay. That's better. Huh. That's the way to the bathroom. What? Hmm, I don't really need to go right now. Should I go anyway? Yeah, use the toilet. Better go before I sleep. I don't want to get up in the middle of the night. It's kind of chilly. Okay, so we're just going to the toilet really quick. Just really quick. <laughs> really, really quick. Ah, oh, that feels good. Hmm, wow, great view. Pine View is a beautiful place. Painfully beautiful. It's too cold to go outside. Maybe later. Well, I guess we'll sleep right then. Hmm, should I go to sleep now? Yes, let's go to sleep. <sighs> I need to get some sleep today. Yes. What the hell happened back there today? With the car, I mean. After all these days, I can't believe he's smoking in in bed. Come on. And why are his legs so small? Like what? What's going? Oh, maybe he's like, oh yeah. That's weird. <laughs> God damn. No, Mark. There's no peace of mind here. The silence. It only lets your thoughts get louder. All right. Well, this looks creepy. I guess I'm dreaming, right? Am I dreaming? Yeah, you're probably dreaming. What the hell is that? This is a horrible dream. Oh. Can I jump here? Whoa! Oh, I'm good. No, I don't want to see this. I don't want to remember. I need to get out. Why am I here? I need to wake up. I need to wake up. Wake up! What the... Am I awake? I can't move. This is horrifying. What's going on? Try to move head. Arms? God. Uh, legs? Mm. This is hopeless, I can't! Wait, what's that? 
What? What the hell? Holy sh... Ab Abigail! I is that you? Michael... You did this. Why? How could you? I don't know. How can you live after doing something like that? You have no idea how hard it was to go on without you. You... Then why go on? What's the point? What's the point? I don't know. I, I, I have to. For your happiness? Do you feel you deserve that anymore? Or for this case? Do you think anyone ever cares about it? For whom, Michael? You protect yourself from thoughts about me. You need to hide me from yourself so you can live. Is it worth it? I... No, I'm not sure. I miss you, Michael. Damn, I guess that's my wife? Girlfriend? I guess she died? Damn. That was pretty rough. Oh, next day. 6.55 a.m. Wow. Alright. That's, uh... Let me pour myself a little something to drink, because I've been talking a lot. Oh, back at the crime scene. Okay, that's good. I think we still have more uh, more to find here. And I don't mind investigating. Okay, let's see what's going on. First, a little drink. So, what are we looking for? Well, clues, obviously. Anything that tells us about Chris and Diane. Nobody in this town seems to know much about them. Maybe their room can tell us more. On it, detective. Okay, so I can't go outside. No. Hmm. Moisturizer, body butter, makeup items. Can I look at myself in the mirror? That's me. You're looking better today, detective. <laughs> Am I? Uh, relatively. Did you, did you sleep well last night? Uh, kind of. Hmm, well, I hope tonight's better then. Not counting on it. Let's see here. There's a diary here. Ooh, it's empty. Damn it! A bunch of travel magazines. Looks like they had a subscription. A book on chemistry. A couple of fiction books. What's this? The Dreamer's Guide to the World. Looks like a self-improvement book about travel. Interesting. There's a handwritten note on the first page. To Diane, never give up on your dreams. Love, Chris. 1st December 1995. This must have been Diane's bedside. Right? What's this? It's a photograph of Chris and Diane. Hmm. It's a nice painting. I uh, feel like I've seen that somewhere. Yeah, maybe. That's the bed. It's still unmade. Well... What? Yeah, no. Okay. It's locked. Huh. The key could be here somewhere. Detective, check this out. There's some interesting stuff on this bulletin board. Okay, wait. Let me see what we have here. What's this? It's a photo of Chris, Diane, and some guy. Do you recognize the third guy, Officer Blunt? Don't think I've ever seen him. Must be from outside town. Hmm. Financial calculations looks like they were planning for something big. Well, the hotel, right? Or at least one of them was. More do-it-yourself, chemistry and travel books, and a couple of novels. Okay, what's this? A mug, a boombox, nothing of interest here. Oh, those are some nice tapes. Whatever, let's check this one. Let's see what we have here. A list of locations. 1. Madagascar, 2. Antarctica, 3. Ukraine, 4. Question mark, 5. Question mark. And below the list, in a different handwriting, it says 
Half the world awaits. Underline twice. There's a shopping list, some phone numbers, pictures of animals, the ocean. I think they're pictures of Madagascar? Quite possible. Another list. Wor woodworking projects to do. 1. Bookcase for living room. 2. Custom chair for Diane. 3. Bookcase for bedroom. This has been struck though. Because he already built it. 4. Some front lawn project. Huh. I'm guessing Chris was into woodworking. Yeah, he was... Oh, what's this? 1. Talk about issues. Bonus. Try to convey them patiently. 2. No sacrifices. Talk about what bothers you and what you'd like each other to work on. 3. Analyzing everything can be annoying. Code. It's happening. Means shut up and give me space. Which one of them do you think wrote these? Well, Chris, because he's making... yeah, Chris. Chris looks like he was the organized type into making lists and everything, yeah. That woodworking one's definitely his, and the handwriting is the same. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so we still need to find the key. Oh, under the bed maybe? No key here. Here? Oh, got it! Nice! Great! I got a key! Can I see my inventory? No. Alright, not a lot here. There's a brochure for travel agency, a do-it-yourself woodworking book, and a bunch of letters. What did they say? Well, let's see, most of them seem to be from Diane to Chris. Oh wow, that's a lot of hearts. Let's see if we can find anything useful uh, among these. So I'll be writing these to keep you in touch while we can't meet. I don't know, but I'm glad that you changed your mind. Look at life in a different way. Really done together, but I kind of love that. Oh wait, this one looks different. There's a severe lack of hearts in this one. Kind of, it's from Chris to Brad. Looks like he forgot to send it, or decided not to. Hey Brad, sorry for disappearing on you last week during the party. You see, after I walked out... After I walked out? Oh, we're going back in time. Right. To December 31st, 1995. Huh, I can't believe you said that. I know, everyone was looking at me in a funny way. Wish I'd been there. Oh, hang on, I think Emily, Emily's calling me. That's alright, go on, I'll hang around outside. Or go around and socialize, meet new people, make new friends. <laughs> this is me you're talking to, remember? All these years together and you still can't read my sarcasm. Anyway, good luck buddy, I'll see you in a bit. See you Brad. Okay, so I guess this is Chris, right? Uh, alright, not to get away from humans for a while. Oh, that's a lot of humans. Excuse me, sorry, coming through. So, New Year's Eve, okay. Hmm. Oh, that's a lovely... God, that music. Actually, that music did not sound very 1995. Yeah, so... It's, uh... Not, yeah, it didn't seem like 90s. Nice would have been more like, um... I don't know, like Hathaway. If there was Hathaway in 95. Coco Jumbo. That was probably later a bit. Hmm. Oh, hello. I didn't know there was anyone else out here. Oh, I. Uh... Holy shit. Uh, I'll be heading back inside. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it because of me? No, I just don't like people that much. Uh, I do like people actually, as long as I'm not around them. Oh wait, I wish she didn't think that was directed at her. Uh, damn it brain, you might have made me look like an asshole again. <laughs> That's a good one, you're funny. Hell yeah, Phew. I've probably made a decent first impression. 
A lot of people inside. Uh, there are a lot more people inside than outside. So I should just stay out here. Holy shit, is she asking me to stay? It's easier to get lost in the crowd, actually, but uh, you've got a point. Um, a beautiful evening, isn't it? Uh, beautiful? Well, yeah, there's the... Fireflies. Fireflies, see? The fireflies, for instance. Fireflies are just flies with their butts on fire. Uh, just the way squirrels are only rats with bushy tails, huh? Exactly, you get me. Damn it, about the weird topic and talk like normal people. About the weird topic, okay. Mm. So, uh, who are you here with? Uh, who do you know? For, uh, who do you come for? Oh, I'm here alone. I came here to meet Emily. I share a couple of classes with her. Oh, cool. That's an old friend of mine. Emily's boyfriend. He's a really cool guy. So, tell me about you. What do you do? I... I don't know. I just graduated last year. I studied chemistry for some reason. I don't even like chemistry. Anyway, I'm planning to appear for exams so that I can study abroad. But uh, I need to do really well to get a scholarship and you know what? Forget about it. No, you were saying something about moving abroad. Any specific university that you're aiming for? Nah, it's just that I'm not really attached to anything here. I'd rather move. I want to get as far away from this place, this country even. And what do you expect to find when you get there? I guess I'll find that I'm somewhere else. That would be a good start. Hmm. So she do doesn't like it here. Maybe some childhood drama? Recent breakup? My name is Diane, by the way. I'm Chris. Emily's got herself a great place out here. Can't wait to have a place of my own. I'd probably start small or something a lot, a little less modern. But still, it's quite beautiful, right? <laughs> That's beautiful too? Yeah, I guess it's alright. Just alright? I think it's fantastic. I guess so. You know what? I really don't understand your way of looking at things. <laughs> don't worry, I've heard that one a lot of times. I mean, I don't see what's so particularly special about fireflies, for instance. They're just normal fireflies, you know? Well, yeah, totally, I get what you mean. I mean, you're normal, it's just I'm sort of weird when it comes to these things. What things? I kinda see the beauty in everything, even the ordinary. Especially the ordinary. Oh god, did that sound really pretentious? You should be an artist or something then. Are you an artist? What do you do? Do you write? About how everything is so beautiful? Hey, come on, now you're just making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you, what do you do? It's kind of a long story, but I guess you can say I'm, I'm a businessman? I wouldn't have guessed the, that the way you talk. Well, yeah, there's reason in a story for how that happened, maybe another time. Oh, another time? Oh wow, we're kind of the complete opposite that way, aren't we? What do you mean? For instance, I don't really see beauty in much. Hell, I don't think, think I understand art at all. It's not really about art, it's about... it's more about appreciating life? Oh, I definitely don't do that. Oh, really? That's unfortunate? No, how can I change your mind about that? What? Why do you need to change my mind? I'm fine the way I... Plus, you think I... I uh, you think I change in a day? Um, I know, that should be... Uh, I know what should be pretty cool, Anne. What's the time? It's about 11.45, why? Alright, come with me, there's something really cool I want to show you. What? No, I don't even know you. We'll be back in 20 minutes, come on, it's only a few minutes walk from here. This is stupid, but fine. See, back in the 90s, you could just go like that, be fine. Hurry up. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, I guess it looks nice. I don't get what's so special though, it's just buildings. Hmm. 
I, I just think it's a freaking cool view. What, the valley and the city in the background? Are dreary, as dreary as my life is, I've seen better. If I were you, I'd probably be freaking out looking at sunset from my window every evening. Hm. <laughs> what? I was kidding, that isn't what I got you here for. But it's about to get pretty cool, right about now. What, well, don't you dare... It's 12 a.m., look! Wow. What the heck is this city? Are those, those are those little things that, you know, people light up, I guess. But that's more like a Japanese thing, right? Like a... <laughs> ah, here we are. Happy New Year! 1996. The best year ever, according to some. Wow. Okay, that... I'll give you that one. <laughs> nice. Thank you for playing the rain swept demo. Wow, that was an hour and 11 minutes. Your feedback is extremely valuable to making the finished game a great experience. You will now be directed to a really tiny feedback form. Please take a minute to share your thoughts. Uh, love and thanks, Arman Sanu. So, uh, everyone, that was the rain swept demo. Um, I would suggest, you know, playing it yourself. As I mentioned, this is available for free for Windows on itch.io. Uh, play it and give some feedback, because, uh, you know, there's still maybe around six months before Rainswept uh, comes out on Steam. So, you know, any feedback is, of course, welcome. Just uh, try it out, you know, play with the keyboard, play with the gamepad, um, and, um, you know, say what you'd like, what you didn't like after, uh, you know, checking it out. I mean, you don't have to finish it, but just check it out. Uh, again, this is Rainswept from... Um, Frostwood Interactive coming around the middle of 2018 for Windows, Mac OS and Linux, so uh, all these on Steam. Um, you can also wish it through the link in the description below to its Steam page. Thanks so much everyone for watching. If you like this video, this pretty long video, uh, please give it a thumbs up really quick. And if you like, if you have a, if you like adventure games, give it a thumbs up. If you like detective stories, give it a thumbs up. If you like the 90s, give it a thumbs up. And, uh, you know, if you want to support me, you can do that by, you know, uh, subscribing to the channel and telling every single person you know who's interested in PC gaming, of course, about youtube.com slash cryptic hybrid. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for watching. And until the next time we see each other, have an awesome day.